Let's look at First uh, John uh, chapter two. I think I want to read this into our hearings, and I saw in verse uh, number twelve that the the, the text I'm particularly dealing with is verse uh, number sixteen. Because uh, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. But we show up in the world. Man. Uh, and in this world, something. Uh, this world is, is kept by the master's hand. Uh, this world has its beginning uh, from God himself. In fact, the Bible says uh, that in the beginning, God said, let uh, there be. And, and, and God produced the world that was not to what we see today. Man. And it's ironic that uh, the inhabitants of the world uh, seem to uh, forget that he is our creator. Amen. And, and forget that he's God uh, all by himself. Uh, and, and so John is writing to uh, remind uh, a people that, that it's all going to come back down to one thing. And I want to assure this congregation as we sit here right now uh, that wherever you are in this world, this world is not your home. It is not the final answer. It is not the authority. But in the beginning was the Word. Yes. And the Word, John 1, verse 1, the Word was God. Uh, and the Word was with God. Uh, and the Bible says in verse 14 that the Word became flesh. And John assures uh, his audience uh, that he's writing to that, that that they are not to get caught up in the uh, agnostic teaching or the Gnosticism teaching of those who have entered into the church, the world, and come to church. They didn't just come to church, but they begin to teach on the material matter of Christ and to suggest that Christ uh, was not the Son of God yeah. uh, because he had come in the flesh because flesh was evil. Uh, they began to question and challenge uh, uh, the scriptures of old and the teachings of old and they began in their uh, aloofness and their intelligent intellect uh, began to say we are progress past of the teachings of the old ways. Uh, and we're not seeking out of the law but, but we believe that it is impossible that Christ was the Son of God. And so the John began to write to them. He says uh, in the very next chapter, fourth chapter, he said, believe, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of uh, the sons of God. And then he says, hereby, if you look hereby, we know that every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh uh, is not the son of God. I mean, is not a child of God, but is the spirit of the Antichrist. Preacher, why are you telling me all of that? Because this world is moving right back into this space. To where we not only question if Jesus is God's son, but if the word of God is still relevant to the culture that we live in. Uh, we, we, we are hearing the arguments day in and day out that the material work of Christ, that Christ, who the Bible says is the inspiration of the word of God, uh, somehow God's word, his power, his omnipotence, his omnipotence, his omnipresence, his ability, uh, somehow is held by men, and we cannot trust the word of God, because it can't be the word of God, uh, but I want you to know that, the, that, that the, all that is in this world is the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, uh -huh, and, and when we look at the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, there's one thing you need to know, it will wither, it will fade away, but the word of God is going to stand forever. I don't care how outdated you might think the word of God is. I don't care how aloof you may think the word of God is. When the stuff hit the fan, the word of God is going to stand till the end of time. What God said in Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3, he meant in Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3. What God said in his word, he confirmed it with the highest oath that you can confirm. In the book of Hebrews, I believe the Hebrews chapter 6, 17 through 19, when he looked around, he could not uh, uh, build his covenant on anything that was substantiated. The Bible says that he swore on himself that by these two are miracle things, that it is impossible for God to tell a lie. And we have that hope that if God said it, God don't stand behind it. And I want you to know right now that everything God wrote in this word, I don't care how much computers you have, how much education you got, how 
smart you think you are, how culture has moved. God said it, he meant it, and it's sat up right here and right now. We, we become a people in this world that have grown past uh, everything that God has taught us. We don't believe that there's one church anymore. Don't want to preach in the church house because our culture now says we're more illuminated and God is more wider than a one church doctrine. And I want you to know that there was one church in the Old Testament, there's one church in the New Testament, and there's one church right now. And I don't care how smart you think you are, the Bible says he's coming back again to get his church and not the churches. Ephesians chapter 5, one verse number 31. Somebody ought to say amen. For the world have made up their mind that they will take the driver's seat concerning this world. They've made up their mind. Women have made up their mind that this old-fashioned teaching about the man being the head of the woman is no longer sufficient, even in the house of God. You men better sit down somewhere because that Bible is a whole book, but we have the education. Did you not know that uh, in America right now, they through the USA News and, and other studies, the most educated woman on the face of the earth right now is the Afro-American woman. Y'all ought to say amen. Y'all ought to say amen. And that's good. And I'm glad because we need some smart women. Amen. And they have always been smart. But they're going to school, they're getting their education. But you know what? She ain't so smart if she leaves the word of God. Because in all our smartness, the Bible is real. Right. And the world want to hear that. And God said, somewhat against you. Revelation 2 and verse number 19. I have somewhat against you, Joyce Martin. Revelation 2, 18 and 19. Because thou suffer that woman that Jezebel to teach and seduce my prophets. I have somewhat against you because you allow her to preach and she ought not be preaching. But you mean she ought not be preaching. The Bible, I don't care how smart she is. The Bible is new like folk of man in the Bible right now because they're returning against the word of of mankind, but the grass with the flower fades away and the glory man is out the flower and out the grass, but the word of God will stand forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let me tell you something. It may make our philosophers, it may make our educators, it may make the educators upset to have to hear that the Bible is still right. You do what you will, but I'm going to stand on God's word. And the Bible is still right. And we still ought to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 12. The Bible says, I saw a woman not to teach, nor to usurp the authority of a man. Now let me tell you something. If you're real smart, uh, you, 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 you don't fight the word of God. Because you're not going to beat the word of God. Look at the text if you will. All that is in the world is the lust, is the seduction of the flesh. It is the seduction of the eye and the seduction of the pride of life. There was something that was going on in the text that caused folk to resist and repel against the very word of God. Which John said, I need to explain something to you. Number one, going back to chapter number one, there cannot be duplicity in the Lord's church. How do you know? First John chapter one, round the fifth or seventh verse, the Bible says that we are to walk in the light as he is in the light. He says that in God, there is no darkness at all. In other words, uh, you can't be somebody that say that I'm a Christian, but live like you're not a Christian. You have to make up your mind right here and right now uh, that you either believe the word of God uh -huh, and understand that you have to live by the word of God or you need to stop playing because in the end, the word of God is going to separate light from darkness. Sheep from goats, right from wrong, the tares from the wheat. The word of God is going to stand forever. And you gotta make up your mind right now to stop telling folks, don't preach against sin. Don't nobody want to hear that. You didn't have to say, I'm gonna try to live my life like I need to. I'm gonna be a sinner because in him there is no darkness. Now that's the word of God. Oh, you looking at me funny right now. Did not the Bible teach in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 14, that we are not to have fellowship with light and darkness? Did it not say that we are not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers? Did it not say, for what communion does children of God have with the children of devils? What does unrighteousness and righteousness have mixed together? I'll stop by 
have said that culturalism has come into the world and culturally is saying to the little children, to the fathers, and to the mothers, and to, and to church folk that light and darkness very well can come together. Because what's your business is my business. Now your business is your business and ain't nobody else's business. So you just keep living like a vagabond and Christ don't accept it. But that's not in the word of God. It's not in the word of God. I know some of y'all ain't gonna kneel behind this, but that's all right. That's all right. I've got to let God take him, man. Uh, some of y'all want y'all y'all to jump on me. Go on, keep me up. God got my back. That's all right. Uh, so just, uh, one person calls me back. But you ain't talking to me. I'm talking to you. I want you to know we have to make up our mind. We have to understand what John is saying. John is not playing with us. And don't get caught up on my butt. I was, I was buttoning this up and I was excited. It ain't cause I, it ain't cause I gained weight or nothing like that. I Lord, I put that in there. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen. walls. Uh-huh. Oh, lighten up a little bit. Because this is, I told you, this is going to be an a amen sermon. This is what I'm saying. I got to teach you. Because we need to understand the world is taking over. There's a new standard in the minds of people in the church. And that standard is the standard of the world. And anything can take place now. And then the new standard has even changed the constitutional law. And allowing marriages to take place between a man and a man and a woman and a woman. The new and, and the church folk are saying, shut up and don't say nothing about it. Uh, the new standard is taking place to where it doesn't matter if the church, uh, a family, models what God put in place. Uh, we went along with that and we, we supported, we got behind uh, a, a folk that, 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 were, that were living lives and only having one child but two children, three children with three different dads. It, it didn't matter. We just got right behind. Because we change the standard, but we understand that in God's perfect number number three, that God requires a husband, a wife, and a child. That's the law. That's God's word. That's the that's the that's the hierarchy. That's what we gotta win. It doesn't matter because things just happen in life. It happened in my house, but it still ain't right. God's word will stand forever. What we've got to do is decide right now: will we walk in light or darkness? Will we say with God's word, or has somehow we have we? The very word of God. And church, I'll stop by the I think we revise the scriptures. I, I think even in the church house, we have revised the word of God. Let's look at how we got the word of God. Because uh, verse number 16 says, For all that is in the world uh, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Uh -huh. And then he says, uh, that The life is not of the Father, but this is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust are of but he that doeth the will of God uh, abide forever. I, I like that because in the will of God is the word of God. But our ways and our will and our wellness is contingent on the word of God. And there's something wrong when a person hears the word of God and harden their hearts. You remember what the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 3 and verse 7 when you hear my word harden not your heart. There's something about folk who read the inspired word of God that harden their hearts upon hearing the word of God. Who even suggests, I don't need to hear that. And, and even suggests, that's not my message. Let me tell you something. The message comes from God to the messenger. Verse Peter 5, verse number 11. The Bible is still right. And I'm going to keep preaching out this old Bible. But the Bible says, if any man's preacher, then it preach as the oracles of God. As long as the man of God is preaching the word of God, that's your message. You need to take your message. You need to take your message. Why y'all quiet up in here? Somebody ought to be saying amen. Ain't God's word right? Or you still on God's side? Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus, right now. And there ain't no funeral home up in here. They said, come on, we praise God up here. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus, from the word of God? Amen. Tell you something, the word, the world is kept by the word of God. I want to show you something. How do we get the word of God? Where did it come from? Well, the word of God came from God. Timothy Paul told Timothy that all scripture is given uh -huh, by the inspiration of God. Uh -huh. Would these men tamper with God? You know, it's interesting that that is an argument, a Paul's argument, of how men had something to do with uh -huh, the word of God. But you know something? God has always used men yeah. to do some incredible stuff. Can, can I help you? I remind you, I take you back to history. When we looked at Daniel 2 and 9, 
and 24. We'll see that God allowed kingdom and kingdom to fight one another, to enslave one another, to conquer and be conquered. Those were people who were not people of God, who were then taken into captivity, the people of God. And God sit back and watched, didn't say a word. And when God knew that the people had enough of living word and taking on other gods, and they cried out to God, God brought them out of the Assyrian captivity. God brought them out of the Syrian captivity. God brought them out of Roman captivity. It was all his plan. And even in his plan, the Bible says that in the fullest of time, God shall send forth a son of Galatia, who will be born of a virgin, uh -huh, made under the law, subject to the law. It was God's plan to bring Jesus using man's interpretation of the law and help him to fulfill the law. Am I right about it? Can't you see God working? God says, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill the law. God, why are you messing with them when they've added over 1,700 scriptures to your law? Don't worry about it, because I got the whole world in my hand. Am I right about it? I'm looking at God. I'm trying to figure out what are you doing? And the people then were confused. They were complex because they didn't understand what God was doing. So in the Gospels, in the first chapters of most of them, we have the birth of Jesus Christ. Now remember, I've been in bondage. I've been locked up. I've been abused and misused. And the Bible says, God didn't send a warrior. God didn't send us powerful, mighty uh, 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 angel to turn out men. But God sent a baby in a manger to save me. And that baby called himself a God, the angel said he's a man well. God with us, he's Christ, he's your salvation. There he is, there's your savior. But like they could see Jesus as a savior, we can't see the Bible as God expressed word. And so we can't read the Bible like they could see Jesus. And when they could see Jesus, they denied Jesus. But he was still Jesus. And the road just kept on going. Uh -huh. Well, stay with me if you will. Jesus grew up as a carpenter. He grew up and they found him in the temple around age 12 or 13. But they just didn't see him as Jesus. They didn't see him as Emmanuel. And they said, there he is again, talking about him, Jesus. And they got upset, talking about he's the son of God. Jesus even declared in John 8 and verse number 37, he said, why is it that you cannot understand my words? Is it because my word has no space in you? Stop by to tell you something. Why is it that folk can't understand the word of God? Is it because the word of God has no space in you? Am I right about it? Because I'm lost in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I get so mad, I won't come to church if you don't act like I want you to act. I get so hot when I see somebody control myself. Uh, I found myself in the old suit so much she's a bad member channel. Just as fine as she can be. Is it because uh, the lust of my eyes and my flesh uh, keep me busy trying to get more money, more money, more money, that I'm not worried about the Lord saving the Jesus Christ church. Uh, why is it that I can't understand 7 Corinthians chapter 4? Uh -huh, and verse number 4, the Bible says uh, if our gospel is here it is hidden to them that are lost and whom the gods of this world have hidden from them lest the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ should shine in their hearts. Why can't folk see God's word? Well, in the text, the Bible says that that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Notice that First John chapter 2, around the 17th verse of our text, if someone would go there for me, and they will see that you'll see the devil working to convolute and dilute and pollute the word of God. It was polluted in Galatians chapter 1, verse number 6. He said, I'm all that you are so soon removed from him that called you from this gospel to another gospel. But there is not another gospel. Though there will be some that trouble you that will prefer the gospel of Jesus Christ. They pollute the word of God. They pollute it. What church is as good as another church? You can't tell me that God just got one church. What if the word says there's one church? And guess what? There's one church. Run me off if you will. I'm going to keep preaching. There's just one church. Get mad. Don't say that if you want to. There's just one church. Why are you saying it? Because the word of God says there's one church. And can I stop by and tell you this? I'm not the church. Your folks should 
all that time trying to tear down the people of God. Y'all ain't Christians. You ain't nobody. I am somebody. Uh, Y'all ought to say amen. Okay, it ain't, it's not me that you don't like. God already said it's not you that they hate. It's what you're sinful for that they hate. The nerve you to preach that stuff. That's why they don't speak to you. That's why they roll their eyes. That's why they got hell fire in them. That's why they'll do something to you. They mad at Jesus. Don't take it personal, but just keep preaching the word of God. Somebody ought to say amen. All right, now watch this. I, I, I hope I got off, got off track, but I told you, I said, they be good to me this morning. I'm going to try to preach, and we're going to get on out of here in about 25 minutes, but they were mean, and they were celebrating God, and I got to make sure God get his glory. Uh, amen. It's my job to make sure that the glory of God is in the house of God. Somebody say amen. Somebody ought to give us some glory this morning. Y'all know God, be good. Don't get mad. The word of God is making you better, not be Y'all ought to say amen. Oh, so 
spent with time. He said, had the devils knew that crucifying Jesus was actually going to save the world, they would never crucify him. You know what you're saying? If, 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 if you don't understand how I work, I'm going to use your enemies to bring it to your blessing. Amen. That's how God's always worked. That's why it says in the Psalms, I prepare a table in the presence. That God's out here. I prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. He said in his prototypical productivity that God has used me in order to be a rose for the gospel to spread. That he used me as law in order to redeem man, crucifixion, which ultimately saved man. I'm not surprised that he used me in the interpretation of his word in order to get it to man. Because that's what he's done since the beginning of time. Now, 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 if, if something just mysteriously appeared, I don't know how I look at it. Because it wouldn't make sense. But when we study, and I'm going to study next week the canon and how we got the Bible, you will see God.